your PA and nurse practitioner finances as a new grad. What does that look like? What is your monthly breakdown? I'm going to share with you guys an example with numbers to illustrate where your money is going to be coming from and where it should go to best prepare yourself for your future. As a personal example, I have been working in the emergency department for two years now and my net worth has increased by over a hundred thousand dollars. Hey guys, my name is John. I'm an emergency medicine PA and on my YouTube channel, I'm sharing wealth and finance tips for healthcare professionals. So if you enjoy that sort of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Before we get started, ignore my flower cap. I'm having a bad hair day. I'm not gonna let that stop me from making a good YouTube video. The Bureau for Labor Statistics states that for 2021, the average physician assistant, <coughs> physician associate compensation is $115,000 a year. Now, I know that as a new grad PA or new grad nurse practitioner, you are probably not making $115,000 a year. But for our illustrative purposes, I'm going to use those figures as my example. And it's more beneficial for you guys to think about your finances in terms of a monthly budget, monthly goals, rather than just the whole year. So 115,000 US is translated to about $9,500 of gross earnings per month. So great, you are earning $9,500 a month. Where exactly is that money going to be going? First off, I'm talking about taxes. Everybody's tax situation is different. For instance, I'm a single young male. I'm not married. I have no dependents and I live in a relatively low cost state. However, it is not tax free. For my example, you are spending 30% of your gross earnings in taxes. That includes federal taxes, state taxes, local taxes, and your payroll taxes. From January until mid-April, every single dollar and cent that you earn is going to Daddy Uncle Sam. His pimp hand is strong, his cane is very long, and he always collects. So of that $9,500, you will pay about $2,850 in taxes, and you will have around $6,650 for yourself. Now you have to think about your student loans. In my prior video about how to pay for PA school, I said that the vast majority of students are taking out student loans to pay for for their education and the average price of a PA program's tuition is about $90,000. So it's reasonable to say that we have $100,000 of outstanding student loan debt that needs to be paid off for this new grad PA or new grad nurse practitioner example. And I know that everybody's financial situation is different. Everybody will have a different student loan burden. In that same video, I share how much I owe and that I make zero student loan payments. So go check out that video when you're done watching this one. $100,000 in student loan debt at an average interest rate of 5% would mean that you have a monthly student loan payment of $1,061. And as a rough guide for every $10,000 of student loans you take out, your monthly payment will go up by $100. Back to our original example, the $6,650 that you have after taxes now becomes $5,580. $89 once you subtract your student loan payments. And that's great, you have $5,500. This is where everybody screws up. You're salivating, you're imagining that Chipotle burrito with a large side of guac, your new luxury car, your $2,000 McMansion mortgage payment, your kid's daycare and private school tuition. I admit with $5,500, I could buy 100 Costco chickens. I could have a full Costco chicken for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for an entire month. But you need to have restraint and that is because you need to be saving at least a conservative 20% of your net earnings. In my example, if we have $5,500, 10% of that is $550, 20% of that thus is $1,100. Obviously, if you could save up more than that, that is awesome. $1,100 does not seem like a lot of money, but I'm gonna share with you guys at the end of the video why you are wrong. We want our money to grow over time and we want to be investing this money and saving it towards our financial goals. If your employer offers a 401k or a 403b and you could contribute to it automatically every single paycheck, this money is pre-tax and it actually reduces your tax burden. Let's say that you contribute 10% to your 401k or your 403b. Even before talking about an employer match, you are contributing $950 out of your $1,100 immediately into your retirement savings. Congratulations. You know what? If you make it automatic, you will not miss it. It gets taken out of your paycheck before you even see it, before it even hits your bank account, guys. That is how you create long-term wealth. But that money also reduces your tax burden. You will actually save nearly $3,000 in taxes if you contribute to your 401k in this example. So your new tax rate will be 2000 
$550 in taxes, leaving you with $6,000. So once again, you remove your $1,000 student loan payment and you have just under $5,000 remaining for the entire month for you to use for your lifestyle. And then you should also be considering about saving up for a house, for that well-deserved vacation of yours, for your next car, whatever goals you have, you should be putting away some money. Don't think that you should just stop at 20%. If you can save 30%, if you could save 40 or 50%, you should do it because the more money you could save now, it will benefit the future you. The future you will look back and thank you for everything that you've done. If I watch this video again, I'm gonna thank myself right now. Thank you, John. Thank you. Personally, I've been saving month after month into my 403B and you can see that in my paycheck reveal video, but I've also been maxing out my Roth IRA over the last two to three years has generated a substantial amount of money and interest. I'm talking several thousand dollars of free money, guys. Look at that enormous growth. And I'm surprised this video is not demonetized yet because YouTube doesn't allow sexually gratifying content. After you pay yourself first, you pay Uncle Sam, and you pay your student loans, then you have money left over to spend however you see fit. Your rent and mortgage expenses, your food, your transportation, your utilities, your insurance costs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Any money that you have left over, you should once again be saving it still, okay? Don't just go blow money because you have extra money laying around. What is very redeeming about this whole process is that month after month, you get to track your net worth. Your net worth is the total sum of all of your assets minus the total sum of all your debt and liabilities. By saving that $13,200, if you compounded that at 7% over the span of 30 years, you would have $100,000, wow. guys. And if you let that compound interest work for a total of 40 years, that $13,200 would be worth just under $200,000. Wow. You have to realize people are living into their 80s, into their 90s, and you need to have enough money to sustain yourself in retirement. Don't think that you're gonna be working until age 70. This is why saving at least a conservative 20%, but I would say more, is definitely worth it. As a personal example, I have been working in the emergency department for two years now, and my net worth has increased by over $100,000, guys, because the more money you have saved and invested, the more money you will start earning passively. You know, it, it turns a little snowball into an avalanche. So I just started this whole process. And I know that you guys as a new grad PA, a new grad nurse practitioner, it will go very slowly at first. I guarantee you the first $100,000, the first million dollars will always take longer than the subsequent ones. But as long as you guys create some sort of goal and you create these systems in place, go work a couple months at your first job and see how much they're taking out in taxes, how much you think you could reasonably contribute to these retirement accounts. I would see how much you're spending on gas and food, and various other things before you start upgrading your lifestyle. And I would actually heavily recommend against the dangers of lifestyle inflation, trying to live like a student for a few years after you graduate so you could aggressively pay down your loans. Once again, you're increasing your net worth and you are furthering yourself towards financial independence. You will be making plenty of money. Don't worry about it. If you guys have any specific examples or comments, leave them down below. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. It really helps the YouTube algorithm so much and consider subscribing to my channel. I'll be releasing even more videos. I'm trying to do a new video each and every week. As always guys, stay safe out there. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.